Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. I seem to laugh whenever I say my own name, which is a bit weird. But the reason really is because Andre is in the bedroom or in the hallway I'm not sure let's have a look he's in the bedroom making love to his girlfriend sweet sweet love he's a very tender lover very considerate and uh, it's my slipper it's an old slipper of mine and uh, it's quite weird because uh, I've had a tidy up today and I discovered the other slipper because he's been with the one slipper for about two years probably three years and I found the other slipper which was hidden in a storage room or something and uh so I put it into his I've got a special box now which is uh, it's a Lego covered box it's a, like Lego pictures of Lego bits so I put all his toys into there, all his bits plastic bags squeaky toys you know, and then both of the slippers and he was asleep but, you know, he just wasn't interested in what I was doing really and then a little while ago he he was like making a funny noise and he was looking at me so I looked over and he had both the slippers one either side of him And I just I wasn't quite sure what he was up to. And he looked at me and he said, Twins. And then ran off with both of them. So, yeah, that's this weird, he's a weird little boy. So. Only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And yeah, my name, yeah, I've given you my name. Uh, so today, since I got up, which was about three o'clock this afternoon, I have been tidying the flat. And when I say tidy in the flat, I've pretty much just done the living room. But I have moved stuff around. Um, so I've moved my wardrobe out of the bedroom and I've put it into the storage room. Because I've got, I've got a big storage room. I'm not bragging. Um, length and girth, it's a big old thing. So I put my wardrobe in there. Part of the reason is because the clothes inside the, the wardrobe are just smelly. And I was trying to figure out why, because, you know, I clean my clothes with a washing machine and, you know, most of the stuff in there has been in there for a while, but it's all clean clothes. But then I thought, it's Andre. So I've caught him in the past. He gets in there and he does a wee on the bottom of the wardrobe and just leaves it. So I have to wash all the clothes that are in the wardrobe or that was in the wardrobe or were in the wardrobe. And I've moved the wardrobe out of the bedroom because I can't use it anymore. I mean, the wardrobe's fine, it's just, 
any clothes I have have to be kept away from him. They have to be kept up high. So what I'm going to do is get some coat rails that I'm going to, or clothes rails that I'm going to attach to the walls in the bedroom. And I'm going to order one on Wednesday and just uh, eventually get enough for all my clothes to be on the wall. And then get some for my shoes as well. That way he can't have access to them. Because anything he can get access to, he basically... Oh, the right word is... He leaves his impression. You know, he... This flat is his. This is his territory. This is his home. And basically it's mixed between anything that he can get to is his, as far as he's concerned. So I have to put stuff out of reach. So the books are high up. The TV is out of reach for him. Um, I have to move the table away so that he can't get on top of the table because he just pushes stuff on the floor that's his that's another hobby of his so yeah I think the only thing that we really share is the bed Um, you know he sleeps on the bed when I'm not sleeping in it sometimes you know, I forget because he some he goes months without going into the bed, and then he spends weeks where he's constantly in the bed or inside the quilt. He gets so quick quilt. It's the core bit, isn't it? Again, that part of my brain was asleep, wasn't prepared. I say quickly, quickly, and there's a whistle. I say quilt without realising I'm going to say it and there's a whistle so it's kind of like a kind of like a speech thing going on there which is because my voice is more from the throat than from from the mouth you know and but the tongue Things like quick, there's more lip movement for such words. That must be what that is. And the other day, so he gets underneath the quilt, gets inside the quilt, so that I don't know he's there. I think partly it's to hide from me so that I can't put him in his cage or so that I'll leave him alone and other, I think the other reason he just likes it and basically he doesn't do anything he doesn't want to do he's definitely not a people pleaser and uh, yeah I sometimes feel a little bit not jealous but a little bit kind of ooh when I see people with their dogs and the dog are just you know it's the dog's whole life is about pleasing their owner and eating and going for walks but ultimately just want to you know very kind of needy and in my relationship with Andre, I'm the needy one. Which is kind of ironic because I'm not really a needy person. Can't believe I have to retrain Andre. There's paper there, he still went to do a wee on the carpet. Just as I'm watching him. Just gonna put 
put some paper a bit further up. It's very strange living with a ferret. See, now he's finished his romantic evening. So he finished it off coming in and doing a wee on the carpet. And now his bladder's empty, he's having a drink of water. And now he's staring at me. And now he's eating some dry food because Oh, no. I'm giving you a running commentary on a, a ferret. You won't get this anywhere else. And why would you want to? So, I've redone... Re, not redone, but I've re... That's him now, Johnny. Playing with his plastic tube. I've got this tube, it's about 9 foot long or 12 foot long and I've got it wrapped around the television not the actual television screen but on the floor where the television unit is it's so he can climb all the way through it and he likes it because it's it's actually sturdy it's kind of fixed in a particular position which means it gives him a bit more leverage to get through it. Now he's having a drink of water. You'll probably hear that. Start like living with a gazelle. Now he's going to eat some dry food and he what he does is he, a little bit of dry food, he picks it up, he drops it on the floor, and then he, he, and he eats it off the floor, but he manages to rip bits of carpet up at the same time. I mean, actually the carpet gets lifted up by him. but this is happy enough. Normally when I kind of make changes to the to the flat, you know, move things around, he doesn't like it. He likes things to be in their place, you know, but he seems to be okay with this. I say that, but I haven't looked at the front door because I've cleaned all the carpet on a couple of places and one is at the front door and knowing him he's probably decided to get his revenge doesn't like clean things when I clean his bag his green black you know it's green and it's got a brown bit on it the bag that I carry him around in sometimes when I wash that, and I have to wash it sometimes because it's just really pongy. He gets the ump with me. He really, he, he starts shouting at me and everything. He just, and then I know he's gonna get his own back. Did you hear that? He always sneezes. And he always gets his own back. He'll, it might be something subtle, like it'll wait until I'm doing something else and then it'll jump onto my chair and then onto the table next to the chair and it'll just knock everything off, like a plate of food or something like that. And I hear him just giggling. Revenge is mine. I mean, the other day I, what did I do? Yeah, I, g I gave him a bath. I had to. I had to give him a bath. And I know that whenever I give him a bath, he always gets his revenge. It might sound silly, but it's true. Always. 
does something naughty after I've given him a bath. But I didn't know what it was going to be. Until a couple of hours later, after he's had the bath and I thought he's okay, he was asleep. Went to the kitchen just to put a plate into the sink. Normally, I turn the light on when I'm going to the kitchen. But I thought, I'm only putting a plate into the sink. I don't live in a mansion. I can see where the kitchen sink is. You know, there's lights outside in the street that are shining in. So I can kind of see the outlay of the kitchen. You know, it's, it's like a few foot, uh, three or four foot footsteps to the sink from the door. It's not... You know, I'm never going to be able to, uh, you couldn't fit 50 people in there. And especially you know, with bicycles, you just, you know, all on horses. So, so I go to put the plate into the sink. Squelch, squelch, squelch. So he'd done a big poo right in front of the sink on the floor. He never does that. That's something he just doesn't do. Maybe twice a year, once a year, twice a year. If he gets cut short, caught short. And now, as we're speaking, I can't believe it. As I'm talking to you, I had my back to him. I've turned round. He's just done a poo on the carpet. And now he's making as much noise as he can. So, when I say he's done a poo on the carpet, there are about eight pieces of newspaper on the carpet for him to go on to no completely missed the paper altogether completely but purposely and it's literally about a centimetre between the paper where the paper ends and his little gift begins. And I literally just moved him onto the paper a few minutes ago. So he'd do it there and then he just waited till I got my back turned and went back and did exactly what he was going to do before. spent the whole day you know I started like 11 hours ago I'm exaggerating because I've not spent a full solid eight, 11 hours doing this stuff I've done other things as well but I've not been out anywhere I've not you know I've not been out partying no weddings to go to I've not played tennis you know, no driving tests, I've not done anything like that. And then he goes and does that. I really don't know. I don't know what to do with him. Oh well. So what I've done is, like last night, yesterday, because I was, I started, started to tidy up yesterday. Was it Saturday yesterday? I think it's Sunday today. 
It might be Saturday today. No, I think it's Sunday. Or oh, it's Monday. That's why then. And I was talking in my last recording about my books and having organised them and everything. But the place was, the, the room was still like messy. But since then I've moved a couple of bits of furniture out and put them into the storage room. I'm going to go into the bedroom. He's making too much noise. Uh, yeah, I did quite a bit of vacuuming. Wow, I'll tell you, if you ever want to lose weight, or if you don't go to a sauna, just get the vacuuming, do some vacuuming. Because the sweat just squirts out of my forehead. Literally, it was like, really? dripping all into my glasses it's like it had been raining I was looking at my books I've got two bookcases in my bedroom so I didn't, didn't talk about these ones yesterday so I'll tell you what that's on them again I'm limited to shelves because I can't have the bottom shelves have anything on them so I just leave a big gap Otherwise, Andre will demolish them. And uh, so I've got one, I've got two bookcases. I've got my shoes on top of them. So I've got my new shoes I bought a few weeks back on the left hand side, and they're black ones. They're, um, what are they? They are. S stretchers or streetchers or oh that's weird wait a minute stretchers I think Ske sketches that's it so they were on special offer so I bought them so I think I paid £40 for them. They should have been about £68 or something. And then I've got my pair of normal shoes that I've had for years. I actually bought them... I actually bought them for my nan's funeral, actually. Because um, I didn't have any shoes to wear, so I bought them. I had blisters. They were, like, probably the best pair of shoes I've bought in a long time. And the most expensive ones I bought in a long time. They were like a hundred pound or something like that. And it was from a really like quite a good shop. But oh man. Very uncomfortable. Fine now. But um you know, my 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 feet made friends with them eventually. And I've got some trainers, or in America they're called sneakers, but in England they're called trainers, although they might be called sneakers now. I don't know. Andre's just following me around. I came in here to get away from him. Now he's following me. He's trying to figure out where the wardrobe's gone. Where am I going to go wee wee now? So... On the top shelf, on the left hand side bookshop, bookcase rather, actually I've got a ukulele as well in its box on top of the right hand bookcase. I'm going to go into the other room because he's starting to scratch at the carpet. See, ideally, I'd put him in his cage when I'm making a recording. But... I 
don't know, he's, he's been asleep for hours and then he's woken up and it just doesn't seem right to put him in his cage because he's full of energy now. He wants to do stuff and play and run around and, and follow me everywhere I go. If you can hear his little footsteps. Right, I'm going to go into to the bedroom. Hopefully he won't follow me. Probably will though. You'll hear him if he does. Right, so I've got a ukulele. On top of my... My... Uh, the door... I've got some tracksuit bottoms that are drying. I kind of put them over there. I do that with all my, like... You can hear him, he's followed me in here again. I'm going to go into the other room. Hopefully he'll stay in the bedroom. Can you hear his little footsteps? He can't just be quiet. <laughs> he has to go into like, plastic bags and make noise. Right, hopefully he won't notice that I've gone again. Uh, but you'll hear his footsteps if he does come back in. So yeah, so I've got the two bookcases. On the left-hand bookcase, and I'll, I've organised them as, as well. So on the left hand side bookcase at the top shelf I've got kind of um, I suppose self-help books kind of or just like general kind of things. I've got Chicken Soup for the Soul which is a brilliant book if you haven't read it. Um, it's a brilliant book if you have. If you agree, of course. If you don't agree, it's it. You know, it's still really good. But you know, we all like different things. Well, I would say Jack Cornfield, who's one of the writers, he did this audio recording, and it was quite a few hours long, and I bought it back in. I don't know, about 2005, I think. It's brilliant. It's really, really good. Very inspiring. Um, I forget what it was called. But I've got a few books here. Sylvia Plath, The Bell Jar. Um, not probably as uplifting as some of the other books, but... I've got The Alchemist, Richard Back Illusions. Is it Richard Back that did The Seagull? I know that's Ken Livingston Seagull. But wasn't wasn't that Richard Back? Yeah, author of John Livingstone Seagull. So I used to think it was actually that was the author. And uh, but it's not. Uh or other ones. The Sleep Book by Dr. Guy Meadows. Um, Aldous Huxley or Aldous Huxley. The Door of Perceptions. Uh, Mood Swing by Ronald R. Thieve. So there are a few there. On the right hand of the top shelf I've got Ah, what I decided to try and put books. In fact, I've just found one that should be there. Whoops, sorry, I'll try to be quiet. So some class, I've got some classic books, which is strange because I'm sure I had Jane Eyre. I have. So these books are in the wrong place. I'm going to have to move them. Wait a second. I know I don't have to do it right now, but I might as well do it while I'm thinking about it. Because then it's done, isn't it? You know what I mean? I'm trying to do it quietly. Right. Years
years ago in the 90s the early 90s I was really into the beat generation books uh, Kerouac Ginsberg you know what just the various poetry and out of that I discovered Charles Bukowski who isn't really officially a beat generation uh, writer but he was from that era onwards and some class him as being one of the greatest uh, novelists American novelists so I've got one, two, three, four, five of his books. Uh, Post Office, Factotum, Women, Tales of a Dirty Old Man, and uh, Tales of Ordinary Madness. Now, he's written lots of books, and I used to own lots of books that he'd written, including those. I probably had about 15 books of his, and quite a few of them were poetry. And, you know, I was a big, big fan. So I will get those again and I will reread them because um, I just... It might not fit in with what I'm doing here and the online stuff and uh, being nice and stuff, but I do... They're quite, gri well, very gritty books but they're also very funny as well in places anyway that's my Charles Bukowski section but that will grow because I've decided I'm going to spend more time on my hobby of reading and book collecting which I've I haven't given any time to hardly at all I've got a Kindle as well so I've got quite a few books on Kindle but it's not the same for book collectors having a Kindle for a reader, an avid reader yeah, Kindle's brilliant as well because it's words, isn't it on a screen, it's, you know but for a book collector and an avid reader at the same time um, there's something just the smell of the page, you know, of a new book not even a new book, I mean I do, I've got most of my books, or a lot of the books I've got are second hand. I've got them, you know, I didn't pay for them new. I've got them on second hand shops, charity shops, or online on Amazon for, you know, second hand. But all of the Charles Bukowski ones are new. So I'm guessing a lot of people don't give up their Charles Bukowski books once they've got them so the next uh, shelf down I've got my little bipolar book collection um, plus a few like mental health stuff so I've got bipolar 2 by Ronald F. R. Thieve which if I do believe by the same man that wrote the book Mood Swing which is above it. There's Strictly Bipolar by Dorian Leader, uh, Madness by Mariah Maria Hornbatcher, Living with Bipolar Disorder, Lynn Hodges, uh, The Bipolar Exhibitionist, Expeditionist, not Exhibitionist, Ex that's a big difference, isn't it, in that word? Expeditionist, Keith Allen Steadman. Bipolar Disorder for Dummies and I've been buying these dummy books for years ever since they kind of started out like sales for dummies and uh, HTML web design for dummies all that kind of stuff and I always thought like self esteem for dummies would be a great title so I've got Understanding Anxiety and Panic Attacks, uh, My 
bucket has holes by someone I can't see the name of the person uh, pediatric bipolar disorder by Finlin Kowach post uh, yeah so that's the few bits there now on the next shelf I have a bunch of autobiographies or biographies I forget which is which they're written by themselves although they might not be it might be a ghost writer which always kind of was for if it was a ghost writer you'd you think oh great the book's now complete the ghost writer's finished it oh great and you'd open it up and it just says woo so I've got one to Susan Boyle David Niven it's a very famous book actually David Niven The Moon's a Balloon and that's uh, the very famous actor David Niven I've got Ulrika Johnson Honest uh, I've got John Richardson I've got a book by Joe Brand Miranda Hart Jeremy Clarkson Simon Pegg Kerry Katona, Michael McIntyre, blah 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 blah. So these are books that I got from a charity shop, sort of a pound each. And I was going through a little phase when I first moved in here. He he discovered I wasn't in the in the living room now, has followed me. He doesn't make that much noise when he walks normally. It's just because he knows I'm making a recording. He wants to be part of it. And I thought it'd be good to have a book collection. But actually the reality is I'm only interested in books that I like, that I'm going to read. Not books for book's sake. And so I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to firstly replace the books that I've lost recently with the hypnosis stuff. I'm going to try and replace it. You know, I just, wow, there's a daddy long legs in my bedroom. I was just talking to a friend the other day about not seeing a daddy long legs for absolutely ages. Right, I'm going to have to get it and put it into, put it outside. It's not going to... Oh, well, I can't catch it. I don't know how they get by daddy long legs. They're just all over the place, aren't they? I think they must be drunk. So, yeah, I decided to try and replace all the old books I've ever had in my life. Not the children's books, not, you know, Jack and Rory and... The Adventures, Nelly the Elephant, and Where the Babies Come From, Mummy. You know that. I don't know those kind of books, but the ones that I enjoyed reading as a like maybe a teenager onwards, which is what I did. Any time I saw a book that I previously has read or wanted to read or you know um, I've bought them mainly from second hand shops charity shops uh, the cart boot sale and also from Amazon and I'll give you an example uh, what is it Sue Townsend Adrian Mole Admittedly, it's not the Adrian Mole. It's uh, the secret diary of Adrian Mole, age 13 and a half. And then there's the Cappuccino years, but I didn't, never read that one. But I've got the, oh, the Jungle Book. That needs to go in with the classics as does The Hobbit as well. Can you hear him? Even when he's in the, in the other room, he has to make loads of noise 
just to be part of this. I just wonder how loudly I can sneeze. So I've got three two thousand books about Adrian Mole, and I've got Sophie's World by Justine Gardner, and that's uh, it's a book all about philosophy and you know uh, basically the history of philosophy told in a story told in a you know um, it's a really 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 good book. I've read it a couple of times, but I had it when I was. I think I was reading it in 1996, I think when I first got it, and then I got one, two, three, four, five books by Tom Sharp, and they're all books about Wilt. Uh, the first one's called Wilt, and then the others are other kind of books about him. And that was one of the funniest books I ever read. Like when I was a kid, when I was, I was probably like 11, 12, maybe 10 even, I don't know. But I laughed so hard because it was rude, but it was very funny. Okay, he's just following me around, making noise wherever he can. I'm just, so I'm putting him up for adoption. See if you heard that little sound. I will edit it so that it's a lot quieter. So if you do hear a little crackling of this, it was a lot louder in the original <laughs> the original recording. But I deleted enough. I'm going to edit it down so it's a bit quieter. <sighs> so, Wilt was one of the really funniest books I ever read at the time. And what other books have I got here? Right. One of my favourite television shows ever. I mean, ever in my whole life. Is... A television program called Sapphire and Steel. Now, you may never have heard of it, but it was brilliant. Admittedly, it was the early 80s, so you know, when it comes to television. You know, we had good special effects in the cinema with Superman, Star Wars, uh, you know, Star Trek. That was kind of E.T. They were, you know, they were doing quite well with the special effects, but not on television. And a, a good example of that is if you go on YouTube, put up, put in the name Manimal. Basically, animal, but with an M at the beginning, Manimal. And it was about a man that could turn into animals. So it gives you an idea of the, the level of special effects. That And that was probably a, an expensive program to be made as well. Money probably went into that. But Sapphire and Steel didn't really have... I don't think it had much of a like budget for special effects. But it didn't need it because it was really good. It was really weird. It was really a bit creepy, a bit um, fantasy, magical kind of. It's about these like time travelers, people that could. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to explain it, but I got a book. I think it's the only book that was written, and then they they made a TV show. Used to have the TV show on the video years ago. I bought it, but so I got the book Sapphire and Still by Peter J. Hammond. And if you look in Peter J. Hammond, he's a famous writer as well. He's written, I think, TV shows and stuff. So, what other ones have I got? 
Ah, oh, there's, uh, there's another book by Martina Cole. And uh, so I've got that, and it's a book that I used to read when I was a security guard. And it's called uh, The Lady Killer, but it's Martina Cole, it's like a crime book. And I was working in Canary Wharf. And I just finished a shift and I was working upstairs in on the live TV floor, like a TV station. And so I'd done my twelve hour shift and my manager, my boss, said to me, Hey JJ He didn't. But he said he said, Can you do can you stay overnight? Because I just done a um probably eight till eight or seven till seven something like that and so I just finished at seven o'clock started at seven so seven in the evening he said can you can you stay till seven tomorrow morning I said what another 12 hours he said yeah I said but I've already done 12 hours he said I know I was here when you got here and now I'm going home I said, yeah, but that's 24 hours. He said, yeah, I used to be a policeman. I needed maths to be able to do that job. I said, yeah, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's a long time. I mean, I'm tired. I'm going to probably end up falling asleep if it's too long. He said, don't worry about it. He said, can you do it? I said, all right. And he said, well, you're not going to be up here. You're going to be downstairs in the some important place where the the managing director of the newspaper his office was just I was the security for that office and he said you just be down there on your own and I said alright because I've done that before but not I've never done 12 hours like 24 hours I'd been down there a few times uh, done a few night shifts um, but he said, all right, so you've done it before. You know, it's easy enough. I said, okay. It's not really the point. It's more a case of staying awake. Anyway, there was a book down there called the, the Martina Cole book. And I read it, but I never got to finish it. It's a really long book. It's a thick, thick old book, but it's a, it's a page turner. You know, I mean, all books are really, aren't they? But it's unless you've got someone else to turn the page for you but then you might as well just get them to read it out to you but I got so I read this book and it was just underneath the counter so I read it and I probably got three quarters through and then I woke up <laughs> I fell asleep while I was reading it so I'd already read on previous evenings, previous nights, like over the previous I don't know, couple of weeks, I'd read quite a bit of it, but I fell asleep. You know, 24 hours is a long time to just be awake. And then I got um, suspended from my job, because so, I got caught being asleep by the person who asked me to stay so he came in about 6 o'clock in the morning the next morning and saw that I was asleep and I got suspended and I got sent home so, that's, so I never got to finish the book but they did drop the suspension when I told them how ridiculous they were when I pointed out the logic behind the situation so I bought the book and I want to know what happens so what other book oh yeah so the the shelf down from that so that's my kind of fiction there's not many there really there's only one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 
21, 22. So it's 22 books of kind of uh, light fiction, comedy, stroke kind of bits and bobs, you know. Then the next shelf down is the religious section. You could say, or you could say the Buddhist section. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten books, ten Buddhist books, and no, nine Buddhist books and one New Testament Bible. And the book I've got, the book that I've had since 1992, probably, maybe 93. So the only book that I've got left, like originally that I bought, is a book called The Teaching of Buddha. And it's, it's, it's really weird. I got it from, what was it, Foils in London. And it's still got the publisher's price label on the inside uh, coat of the book plastic coat of it 25 pound that's how much I paid for a book 26 years ago or 27 years ago 28 years ago maybe 25 pound for a book it's not even a big book I can't get away from that ferret he's following me he's following wherever I go he's just following me going to hold him, maybe that will give him what he needs, ow, which is exactly what he needed, because he needed a finger to bite, stop it, so I've got those books there, so I've got The Teaching of Buddha, it's a little book, it's not, it's not tiny, I mean you wouldn't, you wouldn't put it on a table and think, oh my god, where's it gone? You know, it's, it, you still see it, but it's. Uh, oh God, it's going to make more noise. This is ridiculous. thing is he's made it he, just in that little time that I was in the bedroom he's completely trashed the living room he's emptied his thing full of coloured balls and now they're all over the living room floor and now he's jumping up and down wants me to chase him <laughs> dear oh dear so I apologise for the amount of sound effects that have been in this recording. So now on the, the next shelf down of the right um, bookcase, this is like the classics. And uh, so I've got The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. I've got Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Leo Tolstoy. I've got For Whom the Bell Tolls by Ernest Hemingway. There's um, In Cold Blood by Truman Capote or Capote. The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arnold, Sir Arthur, not Arnold, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. There is um, Jane Austen by um, Jane, whoever did that. Uh, you've got uh, On the Road by Jack Kerouac. There's Crime and Punishment by Dostoevsky. The Road Less Travelled by M. Scott Peck. There's H.G. Wells's The Time Machine. Uh, there's A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. 
War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells um, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, Harper Lee's The Killer Mockingbird and you got The Case Book of Sherlock Holmes by Arthur Conan Doyle there's The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling so it's an exceedingly good book and uh, you've got The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. 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 So out of those books, what ones have I actually read? None lately, but I've read The Road Less Travelled. I read that in... When did I read that? 1980... Nine. I read that. My friend, my friend Duncan, gave me. My former friend Duncan gave me a list of books to read, and that was one of them. And it's there was that, and what was the other one? The the motorcycle maintenance. I forget that one, but yeah. So that's one of them. And the third wave was another one that I read. Love reading. I love reading. I also love going to the toilet and I love eating. So it's lots of things I like. So the time machine. I think I read it when I was younger, but I've seen the, the film. Jack Kerouac on the road. Yeah, I read that in the early nineties. I. I'm pretty sure I read In Cold Blood by Truman Capote in the past. Uh, the Adventures of a Huckleberry Finn. I think I read that when I was a kid, I think, or a teenager, I think. Crime and Punishment for, from Dostoevsky. I do believe I read that in the 90s at some point. Um, I think I read To Kill a Mockingbird, but I can't, I'm not 100% sure. Never read The Hobbit. Probably never going to read The Hobbit. Don't know why I bought it. And The Jungle Books. So, I'm exceedingly looking forward to looking into that because it isn't just one book, is it? There's not, there is more than just, I believe, again, it's, it's believing. Pretty sure that I read that when I was a kid, when I was like a teenager maybe, maybe younger, because I have this memory of there being a lot more than just the ooh, 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 I want to be like you, ooh, ooh. I don't, f you know, I mean, it was a great cartoon, but I don't know if it did justice to the book. You know, it kind of, it was great in its own right. I mean, it's, you know, I used to like it, and then when my niece in 1980 I don't know what year it was 80, 83 maybe I went and visited my stepmum's brother and his daughter watched The Jungle Book over and over and over and over again continuously Continuously, I'm talking over and over again, and I've never forgiven her really. But uh, you know, I'll move on I'll eventually. So that's most of the books. I've also got a Mr. Bruff's Guide to Grammar, which I bought for some reason. So there you go. Yeah. So that wasn't like hugely exciting. Which is kind of the point, I know, but... I'm not sure if I'm ever going to read any of those autobiographies. Really not sure. kind of maybe a book that I'll read and get rid of 
but I don't want to get rid of books anymore, I want to just keep them. And I want to get um, Woody Allen's books as well, especially like Radio Days and some of those classic, they're so funny. Really hilarious books. So I might look into getting some of those. Um, what other funny books that I used to like to read? Um, Woody Allen. I don't know. I went through a period when I used to actually read book reviews and then go and buy the book. I went through a period in the 90s when I used to do that. Very, uh, very educated of me, wasn't it? But I kind of, I like to find my own way. I like to find my own stuff that I like. So for example, Charles Bukowski, he talks in his books, in poetry and stuff, about the authors that he likes, the writers that he likes to read, or liked to read when he was alive. And so I went and got some of those books. Um, the people that influenced him so I find, you know, the bibliography or bibliography or if you, however you pronounce it, uh, when writers talk about stuff that they've read and they like, and if you like that writer, chances are you may like the writer that's influenced them. So that's kind of what I do. So Charles Bukowski... Um, was Into the Night, I think it was, as a French writer. Celine? Is it Celine? No, it's, that's a singer, isn't it? Celine Dion. Yeah, I forget. But I used to, oh, I had quite a nice collection of poetry at one time. Sort of from the 60s, 50s, 60s. Uh, 70s, you know, the beat generation, and uh, then onwards. And I think that's why I like Bob Dylan so much, because I personally love his voice. I know that, you know, he's not got a, you know, a traditional singer's voice, you know, like really uh, singery but the poetry to music um, big big fan of Bob Dylan but I didn't discover him until probably 93 yeah maybe 92 93 and I, I bought a, a tape the best of Bob Dylan and I thought oh I'll buy that. And I think there was two, two tapes, and it's like special offer, like buy one get two free, or buy or something like that. So, and buy a hundred get one for half price. So, I bought a couple of tapes, and when I first heard him, like I played it. I think I was on a tube, um, the train in a train. Tube, tube train, tube, 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 tube train, underground, and I was listening, and I was like, wow, the times, it's re the times really are a-changing, and it kind of, it gripped me, and then I listened to Blood on the Tracks, and that album, and it's probably one of my favourite albums ever. Uh, absolutely love that album. But yeah, so that's so all I've got to do now is go back and edit this and try and find the bits where Andre's been really noisy 
and then trying to just muffle those noises down a little bit and now he's quiet he's gone to sleep now probably because I didn't play with him and now he's thought Ugh. you know so I'm going to go and I shall speak to you next time bye